Hello, welcome back to Oral Surgery Journal Club. I'd like to share with you all a very classic landmark paper when it comes to oral surgery. Now, this paper comes from Dr. Dingman and Grab, and it was published in 1962. Now, of course, you probably have heard of the names Dingman and Grab, as well as a bunch of the key findings that we're going to be discussing, but I think it's worthwhile just to look at the paper in the original and just to review a lot of the key findings. This paper identified a bunch of anatomical significance when it came to identifying the facial nerve in relation to the inferior mandible and a lot of the information and the findings we still utilize today as we're approaching the mandible. A little background about the authors. So both Dr. Dingman and Dr. Grab are considered tremendous leaders and giants in the fields of plastics and reconstructive surgery but little known fact Dr. Dingman not only was he a board certified plastic surgeon but he also was an oral surgeon. So he went to dental school, became an oral surgeon, and then only afterwards went to medical school and then trained also as a plastic surgeon. He was the head of the Department of Plastic Surgery for many years. He's published extensively and he even designed a couple of his own instruments that we still use to this day like the Dingman Retractor and the Dingman Zygomatic Elevator. So that's the bio. Now let's get into the significance of this paper. Just to put it in perspective, Prior to this publication, there were a couple of studies that looked at the facial nerve in relation to the parotid glands, but never before did they identify where the mandibular branch of the facial nerve was in relation to the inferior border of the mandible, which is, of course, of key significance to us anytime we're doing a submandibular incision to approach the mandible. So that's the significance. Now, in terms of the findings, there's really just three significant findings that they found in this paper. So they did 100 cadaver dissections, and they found that when it came to identifying where the mandibular branch of the facial nerve was in relation to the inferior border of the mandible, they found that 81% of the time it was above the inferior border, and 19% of the time it was below the inferior border. So meaning 80% of the time, if you're doing a submandibular incision, you should not encounter the facial nerve. Only 19% of the time could you possibly encounter the facial nerve. Now, they further qualified that that was only referring to posterior to the facial artery or posterior to the gonial notch. In this posterior mandible region, yes, 81% of the time it's above, 19% of the time it's below. You don't really know if your patient is, you know, is the 81 or the 19. I think you have to treat all patients if they're 19, but that's only posterior. They also found that anterior to the facial artery, 100% of the time the nerve was above the inferior border of the mandible, meaning if you're doing a submandibular incision in the anterior mandible, you should not encounter the nerve. Essentially, it is a safe zone as long as you're anterior to the facial artery. So that's the first key finding of the paper. The other two findings were in terms of the depth of the facial nerve, they found that 98% of the time the facial nerve was superficial to the facial artery and vein. And this, of course, is the basis upon which we do the Hayes-Martin maneuver, where we will ligate the facial artery and vein and retract it superiorly and therefore protect the superficial facial nerve. And one more time, 98% of the time the nerve was superficial to the artery and vein, and therefore if you ligate the artery and vein, you will therefore protect the nerve. And the third findings, just in terms of frequency of branches, they found that there's only, we refer to it often as the mandibular branch of the facial nerve as if there's only one. But that's, not, that's only true 20% of the time. Actually, the majority of the time, 70% of the time, there are two branches. And infrequently, but still it's possible, there, 9% of the time there are three branches, and 3% of the time there are even four branches. So one more time, the three key findings of this paper were, in terms of in superior inferior, 80% of the time it was above, 19% of the time below, but all of that was posterior to the facial artery. Anterior to the facial artery, 100% of the time it was above. In terms of depth, they said it was almost 98% of the time, almost 100% of the time it was always superficial, so you can almost count on it being superficial. And last but not least, most of the time there's two, but it's also possible there's three or four branches of the facial nerve. And I hope you guys enjoyed that session, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.